Okay, today we are gonna try and do some campfire cooking. Our, uh, our pod's fully loaded with water, fuel, heating, full battery power. But um, every camp spot we've kind of gone to has been blocked off by snow. There's also the risk of avalanche as well. So um, I think we're gonna have to head down the mountain and go to a place that we usually go to anyway, which is quite safe and we know we're, we're gonna be all right. So it's a shame because this place looks really nice. Due to have a week of snow, so it could be uh, it could be pretty dangerous. Right, onwards and upwards, chef campers, camper van cooking adventures. Okay, welcome back to Chef Campers. We are here in the mountains of Morzine and I'm gonna start a bit of an alpine cookery series, I guess, uh, with the first one starting with a tart to flat. Before I get started, I just wanna do a little shout out to Camper Van Culture for helping me build this amazing rig that we've got right now. This is exactly what we had in mind when we started. And also a special shout out to Just Campers as well because since day one, you guys have always backed us and backed our adventures. When we started way back when we were working in a kitchen and we were in a house and we were trying to go away for weekends so you guys have always been with us since day one so thank you very much right let's get started today we are cooking as i said a winter tartar flat this is my take on it around the campfire now if i was doing this in the restaurant or if i was private chef for anyone i'd probably do it a little bit different but for me it's all about simplicity when you're outside in the mountains and you're cooking outside so i'm going to show you a few little tricks that i do to make this quite easy and there's less effort if I talk you through quickly the ingredients that we've got, so if you want to cook this, you can cook this yourselves. You don't have to do it on campfire, but it helps if you do. It's much more magical, isn't it? Right, let's go. Let's get going on the ingredients. Right, first of all, key ingredient is potatoes. Uh, I've got about four or five, like medium, large size ones. Um, you can use new potatoes as well. Use what you like. I'm quite relaxed about that sort of stuff. I've got some shallots, about four or five of those, which I'm going to finally slice. I've got some garlic. Um, I've got some dried thyme and a little bit of bay leaf there. You can't really get fresh herbs up here in the mountains because, well, they don't last very long. Um, I've got some smoked bacon lardons and I've got some cream and creme fraiche. You can use either or, or you can use both if you're excessive like me. Uh, and also, key ingredient, wine. So we've got white wine that's going to be going into this. And of course, you pour it into your own cup or mug and uh, have a glass while you cook this one. Right, shall we get started? Let's yeah. go. Okay, first step to cooking this is getting your potatoes ready. Now you can slice and dice them or whatever you want to do. You can peel them, do whatever. I use one of these, a mandolin, and uh, it means I don't need to use a chopboard. I'm also using the Primus cookware, which I'll do a separate review video on, which will come later on. Right, get your potatoes and then just glide them across the mandolin. Now be very careful about your fingers. You should really use a guard and you should definitely look at your fingers whilst you're doing this. But if you've done it a few times, you, you might be all right. And if you want, you can kind of sing the REM tune whilst you're doing it. Like, do 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 Just keep going and just, maybe I'm gonna fill this pan up. You don't have to be perfect round single circles. They can just be nice, easy slices. And as you get to the end, just be very careful. Definitely keep your eyes on the potato. Don't do this while filming. Right, I'm gonna leave that so I don't take my fingers off. Actually, I'll chuck it in, who cares? Sing the theme tune today. Okay, so we've sliced the potatoes. 
going to sprinkle a little bit of salt in there. We don't want to put too much because there's, there's plenty of salt in the, the bacon lardons that we're going to be using. We're just going to top that up with cold water, pop the lid on and pop that on the campfire and just let that gently come up to a simmer where the potatoes are just a little bit soft. Not too soft, just a little bit soft. El dente, if you were talking about pasta. Right, let's do that. Okay, let's pop them on the fire. Okay, next up is the shallots and the bacon lardons. Now, again, you can get a chopping board out, but if you're feeling quite comfortable with a knife, you can literally just take the edges off the shallots, give them a little peel, and then use the mandolin again to put them into the pan. But this is something that you might want to use a proper chopping board for, but I try to use as little washing up as possible to make things a little bit easier. So I'm going to just peel these shallots and then put them on the mandolin again. Okay, I have peeled my shallots and garlic. You really should use a knife and a chopping board, but if you're comfortable using a mandolin, then it's a bit quicker and it saves washing up. I've got my mandolin set to a pretty thin setting, probably about two mil. And uh, I'm just gonna, I've kept the little tips of the shallots on just so I've got something to pinch when I'm slicing them into the pan. You should definitely use a guard for this. Do what I say, not as I do, as Mr. C would say. <laughs> okay, I've sliced the shallots, I've sliced two cloves of garlic. I'm gonna put in a good drizzle of olive oil. If you've got some butter around, pop that in as well, but it doesn't really matter too much because this is a very rich sauce anyway. Um, I'm gonna put a sprinkle of salt. Again, not too much on this because you are gonna be popping the bacon in there. Sprinkle that on top. A couple of twists of pepper, black pepper. I love black pepper, so I don't mind going a bit heavy on it, but as much or as little as you like. And then I've got the smoked lardons. You can use smoked, unsmoked, but I'm doing it around the, the fire, so it's it just adds to it, I think. Pop them in. And now, I'm just gonna pop that on the fire and just let that slowly cook down, let the fat out of the bacon melt, get into the shallots and the garlic, and just let that reduce down a little bit. So, over to the fire, Steffi. Pop that on there. Keep your handles on the outside of the fire so they don't get too hot when you need to handle them. Okay, and you occasionally just want to give that a little stir just to make sure the bacon's on the bottom and it's melting and rendering down quite well. So let's have a little look. Oh yes, so we're cooking back on the fire, Steph. Winter tartar flat is in the making. Just, just be careful about the flames whilst you're doing this. You kind of want to have a hot zone and a cool zone. You can see I've got a bit of a hot zone at the back. So I'm just going to pull that forward to the front a little bit. Move the bacon towards the back, let the heat get to that first. Right. Okay, everything's working perfect right now. The fire is just slowly cooking away those onions and bacon and garlic with that olive oil and salt and pepper. And we've got the potatoes on that are slowly just coming to a simmer now. Now, I'm a very relaxed chef. I don't like people who are very particular about certain things and certain ways. And there are a lot of chefs out there who are, you know, absolutely classically trained, amazing chefs, but it's just not my style. My style is use what you can find on the road. It's, you know, there's not always a perfect supermarket in every place we go. But there is one exception with tartiflette, and that is this cheese, Reblochon. Now, Reblochon is from this actual area where we are now. It's the most regional cheese. The monk to make this cheese is actually taken from the town that we stayed in last night. And if you watched our lockdown corona COVID camp thing that we did at the start of the year, this was the nearest town to us, Abundance. 
So it's, for me, it's quite important that you use this cheese and you will be able to get this from your supermarket. I know Sainsbury's do it in a few other places or a decent like deli or whatever. But yeah, try and use, try and use Reblochon if you can. In terms of the white wine, well, I mean, if you don't drink it all before you add it, then a dry white wine's quite nice. But again, quite relaxed. A nice French dry white wine would be good. But again, I don't lose sleep too much over such matters. Right. Just as the bacon starts to kind of, the, the fat and it starts to melt and the onions start to go a bit more golden, a bit more translucent, a bit softer. It's at that point we're gonna drop the wine in and then slowly simmer it. And at about that time, it'll be ready to take the potatoes off and drain them. So things are gonna start getting a little bit busier now. And uh, I am absolutely dying to tuck into this. I love a tartar flat. I know it's so cliche up here, but it's amazing, isn't it? Right, let's go. So you can tell the bacon is now cooking and smelling nice because uh, look who's look who's just woke up. You all right, Rupert? You coming out? You coming out? Yeah, he knows it's time. Right, now is the perfect time to add some wine into the dish now. Being really honest with you, Steph's not going to be eating this dish because I put bacon in it and Steph's only eats, doesn't eat meat. So, um... I'm going to be having this to myself, so it's fine that I just take it from the mug that I'm drinking from. If you wanted to make this vegetarian, then instead of using the bacons, I tend to use leeks. Uh, I just think they go really well, but whatever, really. Any green veg I think would be quite nice. Right, let's go in with a bit of wine. And I'd say maybe a large glass of wine, and then we're just going to let that simmer down about halfway. Once it's called deglazing, once that's deglazed halfway down, then we'll pop the milk in, uh, sorry, the cream and creme fraiche in and uh, then pop the cheese in and we're ready. Let's go. Okay, when I am putting the cheese in the uh, the tartar flat, what I like to do is get a, a half wheel. If you're cooking for like four people, get a, you know, a full one, but it's only me, so I'm just gonna use a half. And I just like to do, like, you can put this in cubes or you can just do slices, but I like slices. And uh, what I sometimes do is put kind of a few little cubes in the bottom with the wine and the, the garlic and the onions and the bacon. Then pop the cream in and then put the slices on top so they just kind of grill and bubble on the top. So that's how I like to do it, but you choose your way and let me know how you get on. Okay, our wine is simmered down now. It's reduced by about half. Our potatoes are ready, so I'm just gonna drain the potatoes now. It's just a little bit of salty water, so it does no harm to pour it out. What I like about these primer sets is they have a little have a little sieve in the lid so you can just drain it quite easily. Okay, now what we want to do, I've got about 200 mils of cream. I'm going to pop that in with the bacon, onions and garlic. I've then got a couple of slivers of Reblochon cheese, which I'm just going to break up and crumble. Chuck that into the, the pan with it. I'm going to take a couple of teaspoons, tablespoons of creme fraiche. Maybe that's about three. It's two large ones. I like everything excessive. I'm going to give that, I'm going to give that a little stir with my spoon. Mix it all in. And this is going to be the beautiful sauce that just kind of slowly cooks and finishes off the potatoes. So the potatoes are a little bit al dente. I'm just gonna start chucking them in. And what will happen now is that the, the sauce that's in there will start being absorbed a little bit by the potatoes because I haven't fully cooked the potatoes. It will just mean that it kind of the potatoes absorb the flavor and then every bite you have will just be delicious. I've got a few leftover potatoes so Steph might get a vegetarian tartar flat on the way. I 
Okay, next we're gonna put some slivers of cheese over the top. Now, there never is too much cheese for this dish. Winter Alpine dishes and the dishes you see me cook, everything's a little bit excessive and that's because we spend, well, we should be spending our daytime climbing these mountains, skiing, snow, well, learning to snowboard and all that sort of stuff. But because of COVID, all the lifts are shut and uh, we have to go snowshoeing, which is a lot of exercise, which means you can have more cheese if you want more cheese, but as you can see, I don't need any more, but doesn't mean I don't have to have it. So we're gonna put a few slivers there on top. Maybe one in the middle. And then we're gonna get a couple of strings of our dry thyme. And we're just gonna sprinkle that over the top. Now, don't worry too much about this. It's all about being quite rustic for me. You know, we're not cooking for anyone fancy. People aren't paying us top money to do this right now. We're just wanting to cook it for ourselves and enjoy it. So don't stress about cooking. Relax, have a glass of wine. Okay, now you might be thinking, how on earth is he gonna grill and get that heat on the top? Traditionally, when you cook tartar flat, you'll either pop it under a grill or pop it into a hot oven and just let that cheese on the top bubble away and melt away. Now, we can't do that with a campfire, but I've got a secret little trick for you. Get a Dutch oven, start a fire on top of it with a little bit of kindling, and then place it on top. I'm gonna put a bit more fire on there, but that's gonna give us heat from the top as well as the bottom. I've got a really gentle heat from the bottom because I don't want the cream to catch or burn. So it's nice, gentle, relaxed, a little bit of fire on top and that's gonna give us that grill effect from the top. I'm gonna to put a little bit more pieces of kindling on there and just get it a bit hotter. And then in about 20 minutes or so, we're gonna tuck into this and then we'll get everything else ready to go with it. Right, let me put some kindling on. Okay, that has been about 10 minutes, so I'm gonna have a little peep. Gently lift the lid off and just see what's going on under there. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. This is gonna be delicious. Right, I need to get the salad ready. Okay, I'm about three glasses in which is always a good sign. Me and Rupert are patiently waiting because the tartar flat is almost ready. So let me just talk you through what we're serving with it. We've got our sliced meats, uh, so like charcuterie meats from the deli. We've got some fresh bread from the boulangerie this morning. And I've made a mixed leaf salad with some sliced red onions, some tomatoes and some walnuts. Reblochon's quite a nutty cheese, so it's quite nice to just play with that and have some walnuts with it. And we've got some cornichons as well, because we're in the Alps and we're in France, and they go with everything. Right, let's start serving dinner, eh? Okay, this is my wood fire tart to flare, all cooked over campfire using wood, served with some charcuterie, fresh bread, a salad, and some cornichons. This is a super heavy, super delicious, super simple dish. And as you can hear from Rupert, we're both dying to tuck. Yeah, I know. We're both dying to tuck into this. So uh, uh, I'm just going to go and have it. Yeah, we'll, we'll serve it now, Rupert, okay? Let's go. Cheers. Cheers. Bon appetit. Cheers. Our tartar plate around the campfire. Delicious.